It's a key element of biblical prophecy involving the return of Jesus Christ to the earth, building a third temple in Jerusalem. The Bible declares a third Jewish temple will be constructed on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem and it will become a source of controversy throughout the world. Temple sacrifices will commence and the Antichrist will use outrage as a pretext to raise hate against the State of Israel. The State of Israel made shocking decisions about rebuilding the Third Temple, causing everything to become chaos. What did they do? Let's dive into today's video to update this country's movements and the horrifying mysteries surrounding the Third Temple. A common interpretation of the relevant prophecies is that the immediate future for Israel is bleak as nations attempt to eliminate her by war link. But despite severe losses, a remnant of Israel survives and leads Israel into a time of peace with the world. This is the so-called millennial age on earth when the whole world is at peace and nations are at peace with Israel. In fact, Israel becomes the focus of world attention as she once more takes up her role as God's witness to the nations. From her birth in the book of Genesis to the present day, Israel has struggled to fulfill her role as God's witness and servant in the world. But in the millennium, she comes into God's full blessing as given to her whilst on the Exodus journey to Canaan from Egypt. Combining many prophecies paints a picture of life on the millennial earth under the theocracy and monocracy of the true Jewish Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, it will be a time of peace and no hurt, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. But detailed study reveals that the true character of this dispensation is more complex than that usually portrayed. It is not perfect. The prophet Micah looked toward the millennial age when he said, the law goes out of Zion. In the Old Testament, Zion came to mean Jerusalem and the temple area in particular. This implies that Christ will rule from some future temple and its surrounding area. We find incredible detail of such a temple in Ezekiel 40, 46 and Ezekiel 45.2 defines a square plot of land comprising outer and inner courts, a temple and an altar. The inner court will be a most holy place and only the Levitical priests are permitted to enter this area in order to minister to the Lord. Messianic Jews expect such a temple to be built in the near future. The whole area around Zion will reflect the glory of the Lord and nations will stream to Jerusalem to worship. It will be a beautiful, glorious place that attracts the nations, a place of rivers and canals, and a place of beautiful trees like the juniper, box, and cypress. It will be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, a place of praise and rejoicing for both man and his God. At last, the nations will acknowledge that Israel is God's chosen nation, his witness to the world. The Bible teaches that a new temple, which will be called the Third Temple, will be built in the future. The first temple was the one that Solomon built and which was destroyed in 586 BC. The second temple, 516 BC to 70 AD, was built after the Jews returned from Babylonian captivity. The platform on which it sat was greatly expanded and beautified by King Herod, as was the temple itself. But since the sacrifices were never stopped during this renovation and expansion, the new temple was still considered to be the second temple. The third temple will exist during the Great Tribulation. Daniel refers to this temple when he says that the prince who is to come will enter it and stop the sacrifices in the middle of the tribulation. The Apostle Paul mentions it when he declares that the man of lawlessness will profane the temple by entering it and declaring himself to be God. The third temple is also mentioned in the book of Revelation when John is told to measure it a symbolic way of telling him to assess its spiritual condition. This raises the question as to precisely when the temple 
will be rebuilt. The Bible does not reveal the answer to this question. All it says for certain is that the temple will be in existence when the Antichrist reveals himself and that will be in the middle of the tribulation. Since this will be only three and a half years into the tribulation, many have concluded that the temple will likely be rebuilt before the tribulation begins. Because how could such a magnificent building be constructed in such a short period of time? But this conclusion overlooks the fact that the temple can be literally resurrected overnight. That's because the Jews plan to erect a tent temple like the Tabernacle of Moses, and they are ready to do so at any moment. Everything has been prepared. Once this temporary temple is put up, they will resume the sacrifices and then start building a more permanent structure around and above the temporary one. Currently, there are two major obstacles to the reconstruction of the third temple. One pertains to its location. The next temple can only be built where the two previous temples stood because the Holy of Holies must be in the exact same spot. But no one knows for sure where the previous temples were located on the Temple Mount. Most scholars believe that they stood where the Dome of the Rock currently stands. That conclusion may be wrong, but there is no way to prove the exact location without conducting archaeological excavations on the Temple Mount, something that the Muslims currently prohibit. If the third temple is to be built where the Dome of the Rock now stands, then the Muslim structure must first of all be removed either by man or God. It could, of course, be burned to the ground by a saboteur, or it could be destroyed by an earthquake. The second obstacle is the attitude of the Jewish people and their leaders. Currently, there is no desire among them to build a third temple. The average Israeli is very secular. He knows that any attempt to build a third temple would result in immediate war with the Muslims. Only a handful of ultra-Orthodox Jews have a passion for the third temple. They are the ones who have made all the preparations, but they have no popular support. Something will have to happen to create a surge of nationalistic pride that will demand a new temple. This catalytic event could be the discovery of the Ark of the Covenant. There is a distinct possibility that the ancient temples were not located where the Dome of the Rock currently sits. There is strong evidence that their location was to the north of the Dome and that the sacrificial altar inside the dome was the one that Solomon built in the middle of the court to handle the thousands of special sacrifices that he offered to the Lord on the day the first temple was dedicated. If that is so, then the third temple could be built north of the Dome of the Rock, putting the dome in the court of the Gentiles. This may well be the solution the Antichrist will come up with when he negotiates peace between the Jews and the Arabs. Many conservative and orthodox leaders in Israel have a great desire to see the Jewish temple rebuilt. Because so many Jews are intermarrying with Gentiles, they fear that the Jews may soon lose their distinctiveness as a people and a culture. The temple was the center of Jewish political, cultural and religious activity in the Old Testament. Because the temple was once the hub of Jewish national life, they believed a rebuilt temple would enhance their goal of furthering Jewish cultural distinctiveness. As a result, the plans have already been laid for a third Jewish temple. A visit to the Temple Institute in Jerusalem will reveal that a miniature model of the proposed temple is already in existence. Committees have been formed for the express purpose of seeing the temple rebuilt. Jewish priests are being trained to perform religious duties in the temple. Priestly garb and religious utensils have already been prepared. Most believe that the third temple will be rebuilt on the original Temple Mount, where the Old Testament temples once stood. According to the traditional view, the archaeological evidence suggests that the Temple Mount is located directly under the Dome of the Rock. This rock is a holy site in the Islamic faith since it is the place where Muhammad allegedly ascended to Allah. Needless to say, any attempt by the Jews to remove the Dome of the Rock in an attempt to rebuild their temple would result in a holy war with their Islamic neighbors. 
If this traditional view is accurate, it appears unlikely that the third Jewish temple will be rebuilt shortly. However, this traditional view is not the only view. Another view recently advocated by archaeologist Dr. Asher Kaufman teaches that the archaeological evidence indicates that the original Temple Mount is located a short distance away from the Dome of the Rock. Every ancient document describing the temple placed the eastern gate exactly on the east or west center line of the temple itself. The Dome of the Rock is at least 150 meters south of that center line. There was a 26 meter clearance from the Dome of the Rock's nearest point. This is a very exciting discovery in light of Bible prophecy. It indicates that the third Jewish temple could be rebuilt without disturbing the Dome of the Rock at all. If the Kaufman conjecture is accurate, two of the greatest religious artifacts of the world, the third Jewish temple and the Dome of the Rock, may one day stand side by side with one another. Even if the Jews attempt to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem without disturbing the Dome of the Rock, such an action could cause the Jews to incur the wrath of the surrounding Muslim countries. According to the Islamic faith, Jerusalem is the third holiest city in the Muslim religion. As previously mentioned, it is believed that Jerusalem is the city where the Prophet Muhammad supposedly ascended back to Allah. Thus, the more the Jews cause Jerusalem to look like a Jewish city, the more they run the risk of being attacked by the surrounding Islamic fundamentalists. This explains why any Jewish attempt to rebuild the temple may result in a holy war. Therefore, it is commonly believed that the Jews will be able to rebuild their temple only after the Antichrist comes to power and begins to rule the world. Only the Antichrist will have the skill, power, and charisma necessary to peacefully mediate the differences between the Jews and the Muslims, so as to allow the Jews to rebuild their temple next to the Dome of the Rock without causing a holy war. The actual work of rebuilding the Jewish temple will thus most probably commence during the first half of the tribulation period. While much of this is speculation, we do know for certain that the temple must be standing at the midpoint of the tribulation period so that the Antichrist can desecrate it. The first temple was destroyed by the Babylonians in 586 BC. The second temple was destroyed by the Romans in AD 70. The scripture does not specifically indicate what will happen to the third temple. Some believe that it will be destroyed as the judgment of God is poured out upon the world during the second half of the tribulation period. Others believe that it will be preserved and eventually cleansed and dedicated in preparation for the millennial temple. However, beyond this third temple, a fourth temple is predicted. During the tribulation, unbelieving Jews will rebuild the temple. Apparently, as the result of a covenant made between the Jewish leadership and the Antichrist, this covenant will be broken by the Antichrist with the abomination of desolation. The third temple of the tribulation period may be destroyed at the return of Christ when the Mount of Olives splits in half, but it will certainly be removed to prepare for the millennial New Jerusalem and its temple. When will the temple be rebuilt? Anyone interested in end-time events has his eyes on the temple project. Even though it is no longer necessary after the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, they don't know that or don't believe that. Ever since the Jews took temporary possession of the temple site after the Six-Day War in 1967, there have been rumors that various groups have been working to prepare all the materials they need. Robes, 102 utensils needed for temple worship according to biblical and rabbinic standards, the training of qualified Levites, and research of the regulations. The temple could be rebuilt sometime between Russia's attack on Israel and the beginning of the tribulation, precisely when Russia and her Muslim allies will attack Israel is not possible to determine. It could happen just before the rapture. Since the Jews will burn the remains of the war, described in for seven winters. 
and because they will be driven out of the Holy Land by the Antichrist during the last three and a half years of the Tribulation, the woman fled into the wilderness. It would seem logical that the destruction of Russia and her allies will occur at least three and a half years prior to the Tribulation. If that destruction is correct, there will be ample time for the Jews to rebuild their temple. In one moment, God will have broken the back of the Muslim hordes that hate Israel so intensely, freeing Israel to rebuild her temple. This would be a drawing card to Jews around the world to return to the Holy Land to worship in their temple. Believers in the Lord Jesus Christ are not taught to build a temple. On the contrary, we are taught that God does not live in temples made with hands, but that the Holy Spirit uses the believer's body as a tabernacle or dwelling place. The fact that Israel will rebuild the temple indicates that she has not received the Messiah. Therefore, we suggest the following chronology of events, states Tim LaHaye. The act that will start the tribulation period is the signing of the covenant with the Antichrist, which will become an ungodly league with an evil power, indicating that Israel, at the beginning of the tribulation, will not be predominantly Christian. The third temple will be destroyed at the second coming of Jesus. The great earthquake at that time will radically change the topography of Jerusalem and all the earth. In Jerusalem, it will result in the provision of a very large level area where the Millennial Temple will be constructed. This is the temple from which Jesus will reign over all the earth. It is described in detail in Ezekiel 40, 46. Today's Muslim-Palestinian narrative maintains that the two biblical temples in Jerusalem never existed, a blatant denial of historical accounts in the Bible. There has never been a Jewish temple atop the Temple Mount. Muslims also claim that the plan for a third temple is a lie. This plan is based on the biggest lie in history. It is nonsense, as if there ever was a Jewish temple in Jerusalem. Such statements contradict the Quran. According to Quran chapter 17 verse 7, at least one biblical temple existed. Also, Muslim tradition holds that the early form of the Aqsa Mosque was built deliberately on the verified site of earlier sanctuaries. The mosque was itself a revivification of the old Jewish temple. Meanwhile, rabbis claim that under Jewish religious law, it is forbidden at present to build the third temple. This applies whether it be in place of the two mosques or elsewhere within the Temple Mount. They advance for several reasons. Apart from the obvious fear of an interreligious clash between Islam and Judaism, they argue that building the temple will be allowed only with the coming of the Jewish Messiah, or when the majority of the Jewish nation resides in Israel. Others believe that the third temple will not be built by men, but will descend completely from the heavens. The third temple will miraculously descend from heaven, and Jews will simply add the door's link. It is believed that this contemporary generation lacks a sufficient level of spirituality, purity, and maturity to be worthy of the temple. That said, today, Orthodox Jews are planning a future or third temple. They are looking for the Moshiach, a mortal man and descendant of King David, who will redeem Israel and reign from his throne in Jerusalem. They base their belief upon words from the prophet Jeremiah. For thus says the Lord, David shall never lack a man to sit on the throne of the house of Israel, and the Levitical priests shall never lack a man before me to offer burnt offerings, to burn grain offerings, and to prepare sacrifices continually. Jer 33.17 18. But when it comes to the great prophecy in Isaiah chapter 60, they seem reticent to acknowledge a Messiah. In contrast, some Christians understand the context of this chapter to be the worldwide worship of Christ the King in the millennium. 
It describes the regathering of Israel from out of the nations and abundant future blessings upon Israel. In particular, verse 13 describes Christ's dwelling place as a beautiful sanctuary in Zion surrounded by cypress, pine, and box trees. One way to get a perspective on what God has done, is doing, and will do is to become familiar with the various temples of Scripture. The Scripture predicts a coming third temple that will be desecrated by the Antichrist. Although the Scripture clearly predicts the reality of the coming third temple in the tribulation period, much debate persists concerning how this temple will actually be rebuilt. Revelation 11, 1, 2 says, I was given a reed like a measuring rod and was told, go and measure the temple of God and the altar and count the worshippers there, but exclude the outer court. Do not measure it because it has been given to the Gentiles. They will trample on the holy city for 42 months. Notice that in Revelation 11, one John was told to measure the temple. When God measures something, he is ascertaining the spiritual depth of his people. Many commentators believe that God is telling John to measure the tribulation temple to demonstrate that this third temple will be built out of Jewish nationalistic pride rather than for genuine spiritual reasons. Remember, at this point in the tribulation period, the nation of Israel as a whole is still in unbelief. This unbelief explains why John, just a few verses later, analogizes Jerusalem's spiritual condition to the depravity of Sodom and the bondage of Egypt. This unbelief explains why their decision to rebuild this temple will be motivated by something other than a sincere and genuine desire to glorify God. In Revelation 11, 2, John was also told that the outer courts of the temple and the holy city of Jerusalem would be trampled by the Gentiles for 42 months. The times of the Gentiles began when the pagan power Babylon conquered Israel and took the Jews into captivity in 586 BC. Even after the Jews returned from Babylonian captivity, they continued to be manipulated by more powerful Gentile nations. Rome eventually occupied the land of Israel just prior to the time of Christ and then invaded Jerusalem in AD 70. When Israel became a nation again in 1948, she continued to face attack and enormous pressure from her hostile Arab neighbors. Even after the Jews regained control of Old Testament Jerusalem, the Jews surrendered control of the original Temple Mount to the Arabic Muslims in an attempt to appease them. The Arabs have remained the present political custodians of the Temple Mount. Today's international community continues to place enormous pressure on Israel in an attempt to get her to surrender more of her land to her hostile Arab neighbors. When Revelation 11, 2 says that the outer courts of the temple and the holy city of Jerusalem will be trampled by the Gentiles for 42 months, we learn that the pagan nations will continue to dominate Israel and the temple courts during the tribulation period. This situation will not change until the second 42 months of the tribulation period have expired and Jesus returns to liberate national Israel and establish his kingdom in Jerusalem. At that point, the Gentile nations will no longer be able to influence and pressure Israel. In other words, only when Christ returns will the times of the Gentiles be over. Thus, the times of the Gentiles or the era when Israel was dominated by the world's pagan nations represents the period between the Babylonian conquest of 586 BC and the second coming of Christ. Fulfillment of Final Testament For the second return of Christ, according to prophecies in the Old Testament, the Christ will return after the third temple is built as the final fulfillment of his return inside all creation. So technically the Jews are prophesied to return to the land of Israel, which they did in 1948 officially, and have to rebuild the third temple for the proclamation of the Messiah. 
but the Messiah that the Zionists are looking for is a total peacemaker and going to make Israel a ruling nation. In Christianity, the Antichrist is supposed to sit on the Temple Mount and proclaim themselves ruler of the earth as the Jewish Zionist Messiah. This is generally, in the eyes of Christians, false and misleading because if Christ does not sit on the center of the earth in the heart, it is corrupted, it is totally false, a destruction. But regardless of these things, depending on who is right or wrong, or good or not so good, we eventually will discover some things that humanity needs to experience for a higher purpose that God has for us. To move closer to God, closer to love, elevated in the expression of life and by experience. We are the brave souls that left God to incarnate on earth. We all find our way back to God with many healed scars. From the eyes of a Christian, the Jews are following correctly the commandments of Moses and looking to fulfill the laws of God except for all war, discrimination against others, and harm to God's creation. They are potentially misguided and will hopefully eventually find Jesus Christ as their Messiah, but they may end up ushering in the false Messiah into the Temple Mount, which will prompt a series of events that turn the human race on their knees. Christians believe that Christ will return at some point from within all of us, and potentially in other ways. Unknown right now. That's why we are here living to experience this for God, for ourselves. That's all about today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy this video, please give us a like. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell to update the latest videos from us. Hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.